this is my favorite tale of why you should not piss off the fairies, right? There was a time, there is a man, a king, called Davia. His name was Ivan the Elder. And Ivan's obsession was finding ways to demonstrate to the world his power over his kingdom. One of the ways he did this is that he orders his soldiers to go out into the garden and build a great number of pens and cages. And then he sent them out throughout the kingdom to gather up samples of every creature that lived within it. And soon those cages began to fill up with foxes and deer and rabbits and many birds and just about every species that lived within the kingdom except one. The one that his men could never capture were the fairies. Small winged creatures that lived in and out of the woods, more often presenting themselves to children than to adults. But in any case, try as they might, they could not catch one. And the king was furious about this. Eventually, he sent the faraway Egypt to a sorcerer who was known for being able to deal with such things. And the sorcerer arrived some time later with a great chest full of magical implements and strange smelling potions. And he, and he cloistered himself off into a room. And there he crafted a steel cage trimmed in silver and enchanted with all manner of who knows what. And he then took this cage and set it out into the woods. And lo and behold, the next morning, there in the cage were two little fairies. And the sorcerer took the cage and proudly presented it to Ivan, who was delighted. And the fairies cried out to him saying, great king, you must release us. And the king says, I shall do no such thing. You're my subjects like everything else in this kingdom. You will go into my garden to be displayed, to impress my visitors. And this was done, and each day, Ivan would go out into the garden, usually taking others along with him to show off his great collection. And each day the fairies beseeched him, great king, you, you do not understand, our freedom is our life. If you do not free us, we could die here. And Ivan simply shrugged and says, that is the privilege that all of my subjects have. And if that happens, I will simply have you replaced. Day after day this went on, until about the twelfth day, when one day he went out into the garden and the cage was empty. And no sooner had he noticed this fact that one of the chamberlains came running out and said, Your Majesty, your two sons, when we went to rouse them this morning, they were nowhere to be found. We have looked all over the castle. We cannot find them. And soon he began to hear from others of his court that their children had disappeared as well. And then reports started coming in from all about the kingdom. And by evening, he realized that every child within the kingdom had vanished that night. He had no idea what to do about this. And as he sat contemplating in his study that evening, he heard a noise and he looked up and there sitting on the ledge in his window were those same two little fairies. And he looked at, up at them and said, you did this. What, what other misery have you come to, be, to bestow upon me? And they said, we have come to do no such thing. We bring you a message from our queen. Our queen says to tell you this, since you chose to take from us our freedom, that which we value more than anything else in the world, we now take from you what you value most in the world. But our queen is not heartless. She has declared that once each month, on the night of the full moon, when the sun sets, your children will be returned to you, but only for that night. When the sun rises, we will take them back again until the next day of the full moon. That is the message from our queen. And they turned and flew away. Well. The king had no idea what to do about this. He gathered together his counselors, the best of his advisors. He even turned to his Egyptian sorcerer, demanding that something be done. Well, the sorcerer did try, but 
very quickly discovered that any of his attempts at sorcery resulted only in a blinding headache and some very bad smells. Apparently, the fairy had done something to him as well. And at last, he quietly packed up his trunk and headed back to Egypt. Sure enough, as the night of the full moon came, as soon as the sun set, all of the children suddenly reappeared exactly where they had disappeared from. They had no memory of where they had been. They seemed to be in good health. And yet, when the sun rose again, they vanished. The next month, the same. The month after that, again the same. Some parents took to tying their children to their beds or locking them in their rooms. Some simply held them closely when the sun came up. Those who could afford the price would hire fast horses or a coach to take their children far away, sometimes over the borders into neighboring kingdoms. It didn't help. No matter where they were, no matter what precautions had been taken, when the sun rose on that morning, the children were gone for another month. This went on month after month, year after year. Eventually, the old king came down with what appeared to be a serious illness. Now, there were rumors he had been poisoned. The king's official food taster was a man who took his oath to the throne seriously, but he also had a daughter who he loved greatly and missed terribly, so perhaps you can reach your own conclusions. <laughs> and as the king lay dying in his bed, surrounded by the members of, of his council, there appeared in that room suddenly a very bright light, and as it faded, there at the foot of the bed was none other than Titania, queen of the fairy folk. <clears throat> the size of a half-grown child, but yet with a bearing and an aura that belied her small stature. And she sat looking down cross-legged at the dying king with an expression that could only be described as one of patient sadness. And the king drew a ragged breath then another, and then the air escaped from his body and he breathed no more. And Titania looked down upon him, and then she turned to look upon the crowd with eyes of emerald flame. She spoke no words aloud, and yet her message came to them as if it had been shouted in their ears, you foolish mortals. You who think yourself possessors of all that you see and masters of all that you touch, know by this that you share this land with a people far older and powers far greater than you can possibly imagine. We do not need to be friends to share this land, but if by your actions you make us your enemies, then you do so at your greatest peril. And with that, the light faded from her eyes and for a moment, her expression changed to one of a faint smile, and then she was gone. And at that very instant, every child in the kingdom reappeared. Again, they seemed to be in good health. They had not aged a day from the time that they had departed, and yet had no memory where they had been or what they had been doing. So, the following day, the body of Ivan the Elder was laid to rest. And Piotr, his eldest son, was raised up and crowned the new king. Piotr's first order from the throne was that all of the cages in the garden be disassembled and all of those creatures returned to the wild from which they had come. And this was done, and from that day on, there was no more problem with those strange little fairy folk.